Hello, and welcome to your video expert classroom. My name is Chet Davis, and I'll be your host today. I'm also known as your video expert. I have a lot of uh, experience immersed in the use and teaching of communication technologies. I have a degree in radio TV broadcasting industry experience. I taught for more than 17 years in a vocational institution teaching uh, students and adults uh, video production, media communications, and I'm thrilled to continue on sharing um, tools, ideas, resources to help people create even better video. In fact, I've opened a website. It's yourvideoexpert.net where you'll find a ton of resources to help people create even better video. Today's topic in the video classroom, cameras and gadgets, gifts for the videographer. Now, today's session was taped in November of the year 2011. And so the gadgets, the cameras, the specific models and tools we're talking about were relevant and pertinent at this time for the uh, you know winter holiday period for Christmas and Hanukkah in the year 2011 for November, December. So the models are current as of this time. If you're reviewing this episode at a later date, you may want to check my website for updated information. Now, a great question may be forming in your mind. Chet, how did you come up with these recommended gadgets that you're going to share information about today? Well, what I did is, again, resting on my experience, my firsthand use in helping people learn how to shoot video. I still do adult workshops and classes and have private clients. And knowing what I do about the tools and about the processes and video production, I did a review of what I use, what some trusted friends and colleagues use. Then I went through a bunch of online resources and books and magazines that I have access to to call the best and the brightest tools that I think will help people make better video more efficiently, more creatively, and more easily. Now, a good question as well is where can you find the products I'm sharing today? You'll find them in um, some of the local AV resellers, audio video resellers, maybe some of the national markets, the chains that, that you may have uh, you know, in your neighborhood or, or just down the highway. You'll also find them very conveniently at Amazon.com. Amazing to me. I just recently opened uh, an affiliate account at Amazon. But what's amazing to me is I went through my list and then after I created my list, I went to Amazon and found that every single one of the products is available through Amazon or one of its um, resellers. Okay. Now I do have what's called an affiliate account. So I do have a page and each and every one of these products will be listed on that page for your convenience. You can go there and just check out the specifications. Okay. You're not forced to go through my store. I would encourage it. It's convenient. It's easy. And Amazon does give me a small percentage, call them like a finder's fee, uh, for um, turning people onto these particularly good products today. All right. So on to the program. What's the agenda? Well, first we're going to talk about video cameras. And I'm talking about video cameras from the $79 up to the $1,500 range. Then I'm going to present some of my favorite camera accessories, camcorder gadgets and little things that I think make uh, videotaping just a little bit easier. Then I'm going to share some of my favorite uh, old and new studio and editing accessories. And then I'm going to share just a couple of items, some books, uh, training, and stuff. We have things, uh, the most expensive uh, thing on today's program is $1,200. That's in the video camera realm. And then we have some software and odds and ends and gadgets, you know, for $50 up to a couple hundred dollars. I even have some stocking stuffers that are under $10 on today's program. So in the video camera range, again, my highest is $1,500. You can get video cameras that cost a lot more than $1,500, okay? Today's episode is more for the people that shoot family video, that shoot video for their church or their community organizations, that shoot it maybe as an amateur, as a hobbyist, or maybe you're a professional doing video with local businesses. You can get amazing video results from cameras under $1,500. But I also have to be fair and say you can't expect a $1,500 or a $300 camera to give you the same kind of results, the features and benefits that you'll find on a $6,000 or $8,000 camera. It's just not fair to have that expectation. That's not the way technology works. Having said that, again, you can create some amazingly beautiful video with affordable technology. On the high end, I'm going to give you a quick review of each of the cameras, then we're going to go in depth. The Canon Vixia HF G10 is my top-of-the-line camera. 
up to the $1,500 range. In what I call my mid-range, I've got three different cameras from three different manufacturers. The Canon, Sony, and Panasonic cameras are represented there. If you do extreme sports, uh, maybe it's uh, snowboarding and skiing, maybe it's base jumping, maybe it's mountain climbing, maybe it's uh, uh, motocross, uh, mountain biking, any of those kind of things, you might consider the GoPro HD Hero 2. If you're looking for a point-and-shoot, a camera that takes good quality uh, still images, digital stills, as well as good quality high-def video, I have a camera for you there. It's a Sony. In the realm of pocket cameras, these are cameras, you know, from $79 to $200. I have a couple of different models, and I'm going to talk about why I like them and what's good about them. And lastly, I'm going to say a couple things about the iPhone 4S as it relates to video. First of all, the top-of-the-line camera pick, it's the Canon Vixia HF G10. I got to see this a little more than a year ago, uh, January 2011, at the uh, Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. It made its premiere. It's a great little camera. Retail price, you can get it about $12.99. Okay. Uh, list price, you're going to see, when, when you see a bracketed price like this, the higher price is what's called the list price. The MSRP, the manufacturer's suggested retail price or the list price, that's what the manufacturer says. You know, this is what we're going to place this camera on the market for. A lot of places you can get it for less than that, though. Okay, So um, $1,299, you get a great little high-def camera. It has what's called a CMOS professional image sensor. That's the device called a transducer that changes light energy into electrical energy. And uh, more and more of today's cameras use the CMOS chip. Now, the good thing about the Vixia HFG10, its image chip has larger pixels than most of the other cameras in the range we're talking about today. Now, when you have larger pixels, not more pixels, but larger pixels, as it relates to video, that's terribly important because the larger picture is uh, the pixel is going to give you a better resolution, a better video image quality. Okay, terribly important. It has dual XDSC cards, which is Secure Digital Extreme Capacity cards, as well as an internal flash drive. Now, real quickly, without spending a whole lot of time on this, none of the cameras I'm talking about today have tape. In fact, there's only one video camera in anywhere near this price range that, that's brand new, that's still sold as a new product, that still uses mini DV tape. The whole industry has moved to solid state media, to flash cards. Now, that's a big benefit to a lot of us because flash cards are efficient, are convenient, are affordable. They um, don't require moving parts. Now, back in the olden days, you know, like a couple years ago, the, the cameras that I grew up with, they used videotape, okay, the tapes. And the problem is, from a camera manufacturer standpoint is if you're using a videotape, there has to be a motor inside the camera that moves the sprockets, that moves the tape past the head so it can make the recording. Because that requires more power, so it eats up battery power, it generates more heat, there are issues you can see in terms of the... Um, um, the, the hardware that's required with that. So we benefit now by having the absence of those issues. Now, it's, it's, it's kind of an intermediate time. We're over the early, early adopter stage. A couple years ago when flash media came out, a lot of people were really leery about a losing media, about flash cards becoming corrupted. I have heard that happening with one or two extreme cases, but as a rule... I would say they're fairly solid and reasonably secure to store your memories on, as long as you take precautions. And on my website, I have an article that talks about how to, uh, how to store them, how to label them. As long as you take care of them, I think we're in good shape because a lot of people are trusting their data to it in the computer world and now in the video world as well. So uh, again, nice thing about this, there's dual card capacity, so you can record on the internal flash drive, as well as the removable card slots that you can take out, put in a reader, and then and then load that into your computer for editing. It has a 10 times optical zoom, which is not extreme. Most cameras you'll find optical zoom, which means just with the glass in the lens, are between 10 and 12 times magnification power. That's average for cameras in this range. When you see a manufacturer touting its digital zoom, 
Ignore it. Walk away from it. Cross it off. Don't pay attention. Digital Zoom is not worth its weight in, in, in the print of in the ink on the paper. Digital Zoom really yields very low quality results. In fact, when you can on a camera, I recommend turning Digital Zoom off. Don't use it. Never use it. Can you tell I have a strong bias there? All right. Again, we're talking about $1,299 for a good quality, high definition video camera from Canon. Now, it has a big sister. If you're looking for a little bit more, uh, I think you're in the $1,900 to $2,400 range. Uh, this little, I should say it's big sister, has a bracket that mounts on the top that has a microphone shoe for a shotgun microphone and two XLR inputs for high-quality professional microphones or feeds from an audio mixer. That's, uh, But again, that would be my, my, my very next up choice. But again, I don't think you can go wrong with a Canon Vixia HF G10. Mid-range camcorders. Let's say you don't want to spend $1,500, $1,300 for a camera. Chet, what kind of camera would you recommend looking at that's in the you know $400, $500 range? Well, here are my three options. Why I give three options? I think each of these are, are fairly strong performers. They've got really good reviews um, from the experts as well as from consumers who have purchased them and used them in the field. I also like, some when I can, giving recommendations with different manufacturers. Sometimes people have a very strong affinity. They've been using Sony cameras forever, and they would prefer to stay with them. So here you go. On the left, we have the Canon Vixia HFM400. Uh, can, uh, list price is $549. Uh, street price $349. Each of these are flash cameras. I selected each of these as well because they all have an external microphone input, what's called a 1 8 inch mini jack, which is um, looks like the, 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 the very tiny, thin kind of headphone jack that you're used to if you plug in your, you know, your smartphone or your uh, iPod, your MP3 player. That's about the same size as a 1 8 inch microphone jack. And, and plugging an external microphone into your camera is one of the best things you can do to change the result with your audience. Having an external mic, if you're recording interviews or voiceover narration, anything like that, you're recording your child's play, at, you know, a, a, a music concert, piano recital, this will make a huge difference in the final quality. So each of these have an external microphone jack and also a headphone to make sure your, uh, I should say the headphone jack, to make sure uh, you're monitoring and listening to that. So Canon Vixia HFM400. In the middle, we have the Sony HDR CX160. Each of these equally strong performers. They have slight variations in their features, what they can do, you know, that they might have uh, this button over that button. That Look at the specifications for each of them on the website. And again, the links will be in that PDF document you can download from my website. And um, check out what features are terribly important to you, what you just can't live without. I do not worry, by the way, about special effects it can do, like it can do black and white mode, and maybe it does a post Maybe it does a negative mode. Um, it, it does these kinds of uh, film effects. I am not a big fan of those uh, for two reasons. One, I prefer to do that in my editor because I have a lot more control. I can preview it and take a look at it. The other thing is uh, it, it's just fluff on the camera. I would just rather have a good, clean resolution on my camera than to worry about uh, uh, which effects it has. On the far right, we have the Panasonic HDC SD90. Uh, street price, about $369. Also, a good, strong, mid-range video camera. If you're looking for a camera that's more like a camcorder, and you can see each of these have the kind of traditional shape, though they're a lot smaller than the ones some of us have been using, you know, 5, 10, 15 years ago, but they all still are, 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 are good performers in terms of a camcorder that you hold like a camcorder. You can see each of them have the the, uh, the, the swing out viewfinder that so many people find terribly useful, especially if you're recording events, like I said, a, a school play, um, a, a piano recital, that kind of thing. It's very tedious on the eye to look into that eyepiece for extended periods of time. So these viewfinders are extremely helpful. 
All right, so there's a look at our mid-range camcorders. Now, a relatively newer category, you may know that um, there's something going on people might call a convergence, and that's the merging or the converging of both desktop video and desktop photography. Digital video and digital photography um, are becoming more and more and more brothers and sisters, almost identical twins. Uh, professional photographers are now shooting video. Professional videographers, video producers are now shooting uh, uh, professional photography. So there's this blend and the technology is really moving in that direction and enabling it a great deal. Uh, the camera manufacturer Canon was really the one I would say that kind of really started the ball rolling and it's uh, what uh, probably two three years ago one of their um, high-end uh, digital single lens reflex cameras uh, the acronym for that is HDSLR the HDSLRs uh, they had they wanted an instant view screen on the back of this brand new HDSLR it's got the eyepiece like the tra traditional cameras always had but they wanted the photographer uh, to have the ability to display the digital photo they just took out in the field and when they put that on there, somebody in the research and development department said, hey, this is pretty cool. We have the, you know, what we could do, we could even show live video out the back. And then someone got their bright idea and said, well, why don't we just record that live video as it's coming through? And that's what opened up the door. Um, one of the hallmarks of the digital still cameras capturing video is that they allow for a very shallow depth of field. Now, I have a, a streaming video on my website that goes into detail about depth of field. Um, long and short of it is you, you have a broader range between focused and unfocused objects. Some people would also call it more of a film look, a very artistic look. And a lot of the videos you'll see on YouTube and Vimeo and some of the other channels uh, by the professionals and amateur filmmakers, independent filmmakers, make utilization of this shallow depth of field effect. It's very attractive, uh, very trendy, and uh, it, it yields some beautiful video. Now, the Sony Cybershot DSC HX9V is a camera I've been using myself for about a month and a half. And I, I wasn't given this as a review. I purchased this with my own money uh, after talking to some friends and colleagues and seeing the results. I really like this camera a lot. It's, it's, it's my... Um, grab it and have it with me everywhere I go kind of camera. I've been moving more towards digital stills incorporated with the video that I've been shooting for more than 30 years, but um, I I'm starting to really, I, I was looking for a camera that gave me good quality still images and this camera does it. It's got a 16.2 megapixel CMOS image sensor a 16 times optical zoom. So you can see the lens on the top of this picture here. That does zoom in and out. There's a little control. It does have optical image stabilization. Now I should be fair and say there are other cameras in this price range, but from Nikon, from um, probably even some of the higher end Kodak cameras, the Kodak consumer cameras, at Sony's uh, and, and Canon as well. But the, th the reason I was driven to this particular camera, to purchase this camera, was not only the good quality video. There's four different high definition and standard definition settings. And I use the 1920 by 1080 at 60i setting, which is the third setting, the one just below the top setting. And uh, it produces really nice, clean, good video. It, uh, it, the, the limitations or weaknesses, it, it, it is not great for audio. It does record sound. There's a tiny little sound element, so it's, you know, it's, it's not its strength. It's really made for image capture and not for sound capture, but it does include sound. So it's not going to give you great sound. And the other downside there is there is no microphone input. There is no headphone jack. So um, people who are using digital SLRs like this, if the audio is terribly important, are using a digital audio recorder. And I have one of those to show you in a few minutes too. But um, this is my, my favorite new little camera. It does have the background defocus, which also allows that shallow depth of field effect. It does have HDR settings, high dynamic range. It has sports mode, uh, you know, to do a burst of, of shots. Like I've got a, a, a great shot of my, my son at, at the beach, uh, you know, in the waves. Uh, I've got some great shots of a blue heron. Uh, alongside the waterfront uh, grabbed with the burst mode. It has a pano setting to get a panographic shot. 
it's it's a nice all around camera, especially when you consider a list price of two ninety nine. So for two ninety nine, I don't think you can go wrong if you're looking for a good quality, you know, medium price range camera for the family, for vacations, for photography, and for video. Now again, limitations relate the audio, and if you look at the back here. On the back, which is the left bottom picture here, that big screen, that's it for the viewfinder. There's no eyepiece. My wife, who, st who shoots digital stills on a very nice Canon, uh, first time she picked it up, where's the eyepiece? You know, you just have to hold it up and look at it. So there's some aftermarket little gimmicky things you can put on there. So it is a limitation. When it's really bright out, you want to use a little uh, a shade or hood. And, and I've got one of those today if, if, if that's of interest to you. But for, you know, two to four hundred dollars, I don't think you can go wrong if you're looking for a point and shoot that does both stills and video. The GoPro Hero 2, the uh, company called GoPro uh, in Half Moon Bay, California, came on the scene a little bit uh, somewhere around three years ago with the GoPro. And the GoPro camera, HD camera, shot high definition in this little tiny box. Now, to give an idea on size, I don't have a human there in the, sh in the shot. But if you look on the left, you see the blue bike helmet. Well, that gives you an idea how small this little camera is. It's lightweight. It's durable. It's shock resistant. And it records high definition video, 1920 by 1080, full HD resolution. And it does a darn good job. If you watch YouTube and put in extreme sports, a huge majority of the videos that you'll see on there that were produced in the last couple of years were produced on this little baby. It's a great little camera. Now, this is the third generation. The GoPro HD Hero 2 is the newest camera just released last month. So released, uh, what, October of uh, 2011. And it has even better resolution than its predecessors. It has streaming video capability and some remote control capabilities. If you don't need those after looking at the feature set, you might get its little brother, little sister, and, and still have a good little extreme sports camera. It comes in three different configurations. There's an outdoor configuration, and I believe that's the one I've got uh, loaded into my Amazon store. There's also um, a motorsports configuration. And there's a surfing configuration. You can see that on the bottom left corner. It has a large suction cup and amount. There's some amazing shots on the GoPro Hero uh, website of, of some of the world's best surfers from a very interesting point of view. So $299 gets you this little camera. Now, if you're not looking to do extreme sports, you know, it, it suction cup fits in the dash of your car. There's also a bracket that fits on a harness you can wear on your chest. So when you're hiking, uh, when you're uh, traveling through Europe and doing your walks, you're, you're sauntering across the continent, uh, that's an option too as well. In the pocket camera range, now this is, um, again, also kind of a new range, and this was started by the company you see represented on the right, a company called Flip. And Flip Video came on the scene about, well, probably more like four or five years ago. And to be honest, when I first heard them, I thought, oh, yeah, a little gimmicky camera that's got low quality. Because uh, I remember Fisher Price had a video camera probably 10 or 15 years ago, and the quality was ugly. Ugly. But um, when I finally got to, to see one of these up close and personal, I was blown away. For $1 to $200, it's a little color video camera that produced decent video. Now, again... You cannot compare the image quality from any one of these pocket cameras with a $300 or $1,200, let alone an $8,000 camera. It's unfair and mm, impractical. Now, the nice thing about the pocket cameras as well, the Flip started this. You can see there's a little pop-out USB connector on the side in the upper right corner. And what that does is it connects directly to your computer. So it's very, very cool. Um, very handy. The, here's the downside, and here's why I've got more than uh, more than Flip represented here. There's actually two different reasons. One is that um, the the company that acquired Flip Video, and that company is Cisco Systems. Uh, you may have heard of them. They're big in computer networking and 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 manufacture of some very high end uh, computer infrastructure, and and also uh, some of the services required by large companies and corporations as it re relates to technology. Well, this was their foray into the consumer products realm, and and. Some people are still not sure why they made the call they did, but a few months back they announced we're going to close down the Flip product line. No more Flip video soon. Uh, we're getting out of the business, and they're not selling it. 
uh, the, the words, they're just closing it down. It won't be around anymore. Um, so he, here's the bad and the good. It won't be around. It won't be supported after December of 2012. So we still have more than a year while it still will receive tech support. The video editing software, which is compatible for both Windows and Macintosh computers, that is free to anybody that has a flip camera. And it's a nice little piece of software. And I'll be doing a tutorial on that on my website soon. It's called FlipShare. But um, so that's going to be available and supported uh, on also through and up to December of 2012. So if you're looking for a good, inexpensive, decent camera, you can get a Flip Ultra HD, the one hour capacity for $59. That's amazing. A little video camera for $59. Now, this fits in the, you know, fits in the palm of your hand. And um, you simply point the, the big black circle towards your subject and push the red button. There's a very small zoom for a tiny bit of zooming. And, and, and that's about it. You can play it back on the little screen. It's, it's a cool little device. Now, Beneath it is the underwater housing. So for an additional $49, you can buy the underwater housing that accommodates the Flip Ultra HD. Okay? It doesn't uh, hold the Flip Mino or Mino, depending on how you want to pronounce that, which is a different model. Now, what I like about that, you take the $59 model and the $49 underwater housing, and for, what, $108, you have a little underwater camera that you can take with you to videotape uh, pool party fun in the summertime, uh, videotape river rafting trips, uh, videotape the you know local hot springs, videotape snorkeling in Hawaii or Mexico. And, and I've actually taken my little flip cameras with the underwater housing to all those locations and used them in those activities. And it's great because I've got video uh, in, in those kind of settings that I wouldn't normally have. Because if you take a regular video camera to get an underwater housing, can run you anywhere between 8000 up to several thousand dollars for underwater housings of traditional video cameras. So this was one of the reasons I made the foray into the flip line, and I do not regret it. Now, one of the recommendations in any of these pocket cameras is be careful uh, about moving the camera. You don't want to move the camera around and try to follow the action. It's best to keep it on a tripod or keep it in some stable thing. Set it on a table. Set it on a fence post. You know, set it somewhere steady. Let the uh, subjects, you know, the people in your video, in your family, in your neighborhood, in your office, wherever, let them do the moving. That's okay. But if you move the camera very much, the side effects, uh, you know, reach for a motion sickness bag. It's it it's not not pretty. Okay, on the left is the Kodak Play Sport. Now Kodak got into the pocket camera video uh, arena about two years ago, and this Play Sport um, is actually the second generation. Now, as of this broadcast, there is a third generation model. Okay. Hold on, a sneeze coming. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the reason why I'm recommending the second generation, which in the catalogs and from the manufacturer is known as the ZX3 model, is that the second generation model has a slightly larger pixel size than the third generation. The third generation has the same exact pixel size that you'll find in the Flip Ultra line. So, Actually, this second generation Kodak gives you slightly better image resolution, which means a slightly better video picture, better results. Okay, so $120. The other cool thing about the Kodak Play Sport, there's a Play Sport, a Playful, and Play, three different products in the line. Each of them are waterproof to about 10 feet. So you can do virtually all the things you can do with the Flip Ultra on the right side. Nice little cameras. I should also mention you see in the bottom left corner the name Sony Bloggy. If you're a diehard Sony fanatic, check out the Bloggy line. I think to date they have three different models, including I've even got to play with this one before. It's a 3D Bloggy. It actually has two different lenses and will shoot 3D uh, imagery, uh, 3D video right from the piece. And they call it a bloggy because you can easily upload your video onto your computer and then up to Facebook or your video blog to YouTube. And pretty much the case with all three of these cameras. So that's a look at our, uh, at our pocket camera selection. Now I do need to say something about the Apple iPhone 4S as I mentioned here. 
The iPhone 4S that came out in the uh, autumn of uh, this year, 2011, has been a big surprise in the film and video community. Um, a lot of people are very impressed with the image results you're getting on an iPhone 4S. Now, uh, relative to its predecessors, it's got a five-element lens. It's still a little tiny camera. It's still got a little tiny lens, but the image quality at uh, uh, 1920 by 1080 is is quite good. Now, again, you cannot compare this with an $8,000 camera or a $1,200 camera, frankly, even a $300 camera that's dedicated to just doing video, like my mid-range recommendations for you today. But for a pocket camera, people are saying you can't beat it. There's even a Vimeo channel. I think it's got more than 290 uh, movies to date that are uh, short films created by people who um, uh, shot the footage on nothing more than an iPhone 4. One of the nice things about the iPhone 4S, which you see demonstrated in this particular um, uh, visual on the right side, here's a, you know, the upper left corner is a person jumping in off the dock, and on the right, we have acquired that footage, and now we're in the trim mode. So you can actually trim and do some very minor editing right inside the phone. Now, that's a native application that comes with the video tools of the iPhone for us. For a little bit more, I think it's $9.99, you can even download a light version, a very light version of iMovie that you can do some titling and some transitions. Uh, in one of my other webinars, I talk about uh, Vimeo has a free app that even lets you do some slight editing like that and even upload it to the Vimeo channel. So the iPhone 4S, it may, it, I, I'm, I'm not suggesting you run out and purchase that just to do video uh, this year, but the, I hate to use the word game changer, but I just did. And I think the iPhone 4S really is going to be that for the industry in terms of consumer electronics. Um, it, it, it just is pointing to a future where our, our small handheld portable devices are likely going to replace some dedicated appliance. And I, in fact, I think the people that should be sweating right now and probably are, are the cam video camera manufacturers, because as more and more people migrate to a device where they can do multiple things and do it quite well, thank you, um, it calls into question, why should I have a $500 uh, video camera when my uh, smartphone does a good job? Let me take a, uh, a, a, a commercial break and say I would invite you to check out the resources I have at my website. That's yourvideoexpert.net. Yourvideoexpert.net. There's streaming video tutorials. There's print tutorials. Uh, I have a blog, uh, kind of an online journal where I share news and views about what's happening in the video industry. There's sample videos you can check out. There's a collection of my archives where I have uh, uh, previous volumes of my webinars, uh, one hour and one hour and 15 minutes on a variety of subjects and all the future ones as well. And it's here as well that you'll find my um, uh, Amazon store link. So that's my brief commercial for yourvideoexpert.net. I also want to point out I do have a website where I offer training and instruction. You'll find that at bestvideoworkshops.com. I have uh, half-day workshops, three-hour workshops. I have full-day uh, presentations, and I have multiple-day video adventures. I even have virtual workshops where you attend uh, in the comfort and convenience of your home or office and uh, watch the instruction on your computer screen. Check them all out at yourbestvideoworkshops.com. On to the next topic, on-location videotaping and accessories.